I believe that being a parent, being a mom is the most important thing that we can do in this world. We're raising somebody's husband, somebody's wife, you know, on and on and on. And so my, um, my mission is to bring together experts and tools so that they're all in one place, easy, easy to find them. Because as moms, we don't have time to search. Welcome to YourBrilliance.com. I'm your host, Amy Waterman. When you look at the parenting advice out there, do you ever think to yourself, they've obviously never dealt with a child like mine? You know you're a good parent, but sometimes your kid just baffles you. You don't know how to deal with your kid's unique particular challenges, and that cookie-cutter parenting advice just doesn't cut it. Our guest for today knows what it's like to be faced with parenting a kid who doesn't fit inside a box. Michelle Denbor is a mom mentor, as well as a fitness and wellness coach, an inspirational speaker, an author, and most importantly, a mom herself. She sailed through parenthood with her first kid, but her second challenged everything she thought she knew about parenting. And today she's going to share with us her story as a mom how she learned to let go of the power struggles and empower her kids to make the right choices. And plus, you will be learning some pretty cool tools that can help you on your own parenting journey. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, thank you so much. So we have to start out. Tell us about your kids. (laughs) Okay, so I have two boys. One is 24 and the other is nine. Um, big age gap, right? <laughs> That's the first thing I always hear. Yeah. And they were very different kids, weren't they? Oh my goodness. Yes. I always say that my first one was very black and white and my second is gray and purple and blue and reds, <laughs> all the other things. <laughs> you know, and this is why it seems to be that when you have several kids, they're never the same. Like you've got your easy kid and you've got your hard kid and what worked with the easy kid doesn't work with a hard kid. And I know that this is something that happened with you. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Yeah. I, um, I actually, you know, would have been confident in saying, I'm a good mom. I got this mom thing down. And, um, I started to make some plans for when my older boy, um, was graduated and out of the home and you know mom thing great got that <clears throat> and then god kind of laughed at me you know that saying when you make a plan he laughs well let me tell you <laughs> he really did um my my little prince came along and um challenged all of those things yeah I had to learn to reparent. Um, yeah, you couldn't parent the same way, even though I thought I was good at it. I had to, um, I had to learn how to reframe, how to, um, even at a very young age, how to avoid a power struggle. Because when we're power struggling, I mean, really, we're not getting anywhere for anyone. And I was really blessed to be mentored by um, his therapist and his therapist supervisor because I just kind of dove right in. I wanted to learn all the things. And um, so I I, I did. I learned as much as I could until they told me they couldn't teach me anymore. And it brought me to realize that unless you have a, a spirited kid, um, a spirited child, you don't get all these tools. We're not given, you know, a manual. We're, we're given this beautiful baby and okay, goodbye, good luck, you know? And I feel like these tools really need to be accessible to everyone because we have our kids for so little time in our home that why not enjoy it? And be able to really just embrace that time instead of having that constant struggle and surviving instead of thriving. 
So what were some of the specific behaviors that you found to be new and different and challenging about uh, your second son? Oh, (laughs) Um, so my first one was very, um, like I say, black and white, you know, um, don't touch that. You need to stay here. You know, Um, I need you to get dressed. (laughs) And he would just do that. Where my second one is like, I wouldn't say why, but it's all, it's kind of got to be his idea. Um, you know, it has to be, it, it, yeah, it needs to be reframed instead of saying, you know, get dressed. It's, you know, oh, what do we need to do before the bus comes? <laughs> you know, um, one of the tools that I use is, um, Alexa. Um, I, yes, I use her for everything. My best friend. (laughs) Um, so she says at seven o'clock every night, it's seven o'clock reminder bath time. Uh Uh-huh. And my little guy will go, oh, bath time. Instead of doing the, it's time to take the bath. It's time to go get in the bath. Oh, I think we need to get in the bath. (sighs) So yes. this is really interesting because then mom's not the bad guy. It's actually just the robot voice in the corner <laughs> saying what we should be doing. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you know, you're not pestering and nagging and, and that feeling that you get, right, when you're nagging or you're, you know, come on, just listen. Do we have to do this every night? Um, so it does. It eliminates it. When we were doing school at home, Every morning I would look at his day and I would just set, you know, your breaks or your Zooms or, you know, what he needed to do for the day. And then she would remind me just as well as she would remind him. But it was just, that's what we do. It wasn't a, you know, again, that power struggle. And you developed so many tools on your own because you didn't have the tools you needed to get your son doing what he needed to be doing and to help him um, stay calm and not go into those big behaviors. Could you share some of the things that you invented to make the parenting journey easier? Mm. (laughs) Um, Well, I do a lot of, a lot of charts Um, before he started to speak. When we, when he came to us, he wasn't speaking yet. Um, I took pictures of everything around my house. Um, that he might want or need. And I laminated them and then I cut them so that we had an envelope in the car, an envelope in the house. My husband had one so that there wasn't that struggle of, I can't get out what I need. He could just show you. And then we also used the words as we were, you know, oh, you want milk. Um, and so, I mean, it built, it, it brought his vocabulary very fast, but it also helped us to not be questioning and wondering, you know, what does he want? And that's a huge source of frustration for kids is not being able to communicate. And I think sometimes we live in such a language centric world that we forget that kids are actually very sensory. They use their senses to perceive the world. And maybe those words aren't necessarily the most natural for them. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely have found that with kids a lot. They don't have the, the vocabulary we have yet. So they can't put into words what they're feeling. Um, and so another tool that we have is um, emotions. So we have the zones, the red, yellow, blue, and green zone. And then we have all the emotions. And so we use that a lot. We used that a lot too of, you know, well, what zone are you in? What does that look like? A lot of modeling. Um, for him, he, he um, has some impulse control. So we use the modeling of, oh, I'm mad. And really sharing with him when I feel those same feelings too. So he sees that it's normal, but he also sees how we deal with those things. And he shares some of these tools himself. You've got Wisdom Wednesdays on your private Facebook group. 
and members can come and see him talk about his favorite tools too. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, when we teach, we learn, right? And so, um, we have so many tools and some days I'm putting them away and I'm pulling other ones out and I don't always know what tool we need, right? You open the toolbox and you're like, uh, so I started doing wisdom Wednesdays because I felt like if he was sharing tools with kids, I ask him every Wednesday, what tool do you think we should share for kids today? What do you think that, you know, would be helpful? And so every week he gets to choose. So um, we didn't do one last week because I was out of town. But the week prior, he shared EFT tapping. And it was such a proud mom moment because, I mean, we do it all the time and we utilize it. But he hasn't led it a lot. And so I was prepared to lead it and have him follow me. If you're not familiar with EFT tapping, it is tapping on the um, acupuncture points and putting in positive affirmations. It's another way to reframe your neurological pathways. And um, so a lot of times I lead and he follows. So it's kind of like a game of Simon Says. But he led it. And I was just like, I mean, it was everything I could do on on the Facebook Live to not be like that because I was just like, oh, I was so proud. And it's so, so exciting to see him sharing those things because then I know that it's really helping him too. In the beginning, all of these tools were just for you and your husband working with your son. But there was a point when... You were told that it was time to not keep your tools in a box and to start sharing them with the wider world. So tell us if, if the mothers listening, watching this right now are interested in your tools, how can they find out what works for you and get a copy for themselves? Well, I actually, um, I put together a book of, um, and it's free. It's a free ebook that has some basic tools that you can go through and you can modify them for your household because every child is different. Every household is different. Um, And so, yeah, they can download the book and um, they can see, you know, the different things, what might work, what might not. And you offer so much more than this as well, because you offer a Facebook group to support moms. You are offering a paid membership site. You've, you're have you even offering masterminds. So tell us a little more about your mission to support mothers who don't have the tools they need for their own kids' unique needs. Mm-hmm. That is my mission. I I believe that being a parent, being a mom is the most important thing that we can do in this world. We're raising somebody's husband, somebody's wife, you know, on and on and on. And so my, um, my mission is to bring together experts and tools so that they're all in one place, easy, easy to find them. Because as moms, we don't have time to search. I, I did that. <laughs> and um, so I'm in the process right now of creating some EFT bundles that will be simple, downloadable, as well as um, a paid membership that will be rolling out in May-ish. Um, and then I believe in June, we're going to actually do a mastermind. And the difference between the two is the paid membership. You can come in, you'll meet other like-minded moms, and we're going to all be able to support each other bring different tools cuz i don't i don't know everything i i mean whew, right so everybody can bring in what they use and you come together and the tools that are going to be like i've already done this with a lot of other moms so the tools that come from that are life changing but also being able to come together with other like-minded moms and be real and be be able to say, you know what? Oh, it's been a week, you know, and not feel judged because we've all got those times. Um, But then also be able to come and say, wow, it's been a good week. I haven't had any big behaviors this week and I'm celebrating. 
you know, be able to have that community that you can do that, that's safe. So one of the things I really love, and this is actually a phrase you taught me, I hadn't heard this before, was the phrase big behaviors. Because I see so much shaming of kids who don't fit inside that box, kids who have inappropriate behaviors in public, kids who uh, struggle in the classroom, and there's so much shaming. And the problem is, of course, that shaming is not just that kid is bad, but it's also those parents are bad. And what I really appreciate is that for you, it's not about, it's getting the shame and judgment out and saying, and it's not even parenting theory as much as it is, here's practical things. Okay, we have this specific thing we need to do. We need to get the child to take a bath at seven o'clock every night. (laughs) How are we going to do that? And that is what I appreciate. Yeah, we have to be able to, I mean, we have to be able to get the things done, right? And so we've got two choices. We can make it easy. (laughs) <laughs> we can struggle through it and have that power struggle. And I believe with kids, just like with adults, we're all so different that, you know, calling it inappropriate behaviors or all the other names that you might hear, it just puts that label on them when that's not really it. Sometimes it's just being misunderstood or, you know, being in. One of the things, I think one of the examples I learned for the very first time when we first started this journey was, you know, when you're watching a TV show and you're really into it, and then all of a sudden your husband was to come and turn off the TV. You're going to be like, what are you doing? Well, our kids get focused on things that we might not even realize how focused they are. And then we're like, bath time. And we do that, you know, and so, you know, giving those little warnings and treating them um, the way that we would want to be treated because, you know, they're people too. And knowing and understanding like how much time they need, you know, and giving them those, those little cues. And when we talk about, you know, some of the behaviors, the big behaviors, um, or like with mine, I call them spirited. because. <clears throat> you know, he can be challenging, <laughs> but he's not always challenging, right? But he's very passionate and spirited about what he's doing and who he is. It's so, the language is so important because also our kids hear us talking about them. And when you say, oh yeah, tantruming again, oh yeah, the school called again, I think they pick up on that. Whereas something spirited and passionate, that's a positive, that's a positive word. Even though it's describing behavior that isn't necessarily what you want, it's still a positive way to talk about it. Well, and we have to talk about it. That's the other thing that I believe that it's, it, it used to be so like hush, hush, and we don't talk about things like that. And I'm really working to change that about being moms, being parents is that, you know what, we all have these times, we all have these challenges. And so why be behind closed doors and, oh, we can't talk about that, Amy. You know, that's private. And so talking about it in the best way we can, so when they do hear us, because we're their voice, we're their inner voice that they're going to be hearing for the rest of their lives. That is fantastic. So for those of you out there watching, If this is resonating with you, if you're like, I really want to learn more about this, we have a link for you to go and get Michelle's free book on how to empower your kids to make good decisions. And you can learn all about everything else she does. So make sure and get it now. The link is just go to yourbrilliance.org slash empower kids. So that's yourbrilliance.org slash empower kids. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming onto the show. And I wondered if you had any last message you would like to leave our viewers with. Mm. Yeah. Um, I believe that you are meant to be your child's mother. No matter how the child came to you, whether it be natural, whether it be adoption, whatever the case may be, 
you're meant to be that child's mother and you have the intuition to really know what your child needs. And it's all within you. Sometimes we need tools. Sometimes we need support. But you really do know what your child needs and how to be the mother to your child. Thank you so much, Michelle. And thank you out there for watching. Now, what was your biggest insight or aha moment while watching this interview? If you feel comfortable, share it with us in the comments. And for more interviews like these, make sure to subscribe to Your Brilliance TV here on YouTube, and then come on over to yourbrilliance.com for more tips and insights on how you can live your most brilliant life. See you next time.